Most New Yorkers are very familiar with the Big Apple Circus. It has come to town for the past 40 years, taking over Lincoln Center's Damroche Park. But what they aren't familiar with is what it's like for the 30 performers who travel with the Big Top for seven months out of the year. Today we're sitting down with one of the flying Tunisianis to see what life is like when you literally run off and join the circus. Be safe and close, darling. Your heart is precious to me. So I'm sure you get tired of hearing the phrase, run off and join the circus. So how does it really go down? Is the circus something that you have to be born into, like the mafia, and you train for it from a very young age? Or is it something you go to school for? Well, in my case, I'm a fifth generation of a circus family. So I was born and raised in the circus environment. And of course, you can run with the circus if you want to. We have like one of the trapeze girls is the first generation. She just learned from the circus school and she's coming with us and I think for the girls that start this they start like fitness they start to do something different they just want to get out of the the life like New York lifestyle you know buildings they do something different and I think they get this falling in love with trapeze and they just run away with the circus and it, of course can be a hobby because it is for us as well when you just want to practice and just let it go, everything you have inside, you just like focus and you practice. But for us, it's also our job. So it's it's a job and it's, it's not a job because it's my lifestyle as well. So it's I guess it's just, I was born for that. So has your family always done trapeze or did you get to pick what you wanted to do? My dad and my mom did trapeze. Actually, my grandfather did trapeze as well. We have a couple of juggling acts like clowns, but most of it was, was trapeze artists. How do you transition from circus arts as a hobby to a career and make it into a professional troupe like Big Apple Circus? Well, for me it was easy because I grew up in the circus, so since I was little I was already in the stage. So I was five, I believe I was the first time on the, on the stage. My mom just put me for some magic they needed, like it's normal because it was my dad's circus. And we did a, a couple of auditions in the past. Now we got like Big Apple Circus, they already know the Tunisian troupe. So it's more like you got into a top what you do and it's just your name is running there. So if people actually call you and get you to work in the circus, but definitely it is audition. Like we did this audition for Stephanie Monceau, our new ringmaster, and she did audition and she passed in the audition. So yes, it is audition for the circus in our case uh, they just called us and said, we want the Tunisian troupe at the Big Apple Circus and that's amazing. What's training like for you before the show hits the road and then once you're on tour? For us, it's more like just keeping up the, the, the high level of the show than to be like, we needed to be practicing new tricks or uh, it's more like routine. So here, the first weeks of uh, New York, it's like our re rehearsal week. So we, try, we practice a lot to get everything ready for our opening days. But once we have the, we are ready stable in the, in the city, we practice, let's say, four times a week, two hours practice. And of course, when we're traveling, we can't, but it's kind of like our days off. So when we're traveling, it's the day we need to rest, or we, we used to rest, you know. Tell us what life is like on the road. Where do you live? Do you get to bring your family? How many shows you're performing? Give us a day in the life. Actually, I travel with my family. I travel with my husband and my two kids and my brothers-in-law. And it's beautiful. I, for me, it's like keeping up the tradition of my family. So I love it, something that I, I just love to do. And it's easy, like you got to know so many different places on different countries. We travel already for many like Asia, Europe, South of America, North America, we're doing like the USA. So I love to travel. So this is the beauty of the circus. You get to know different uh, countries, different cities, different cultures. Like I speak four languages and it's because of my job and it's because what I do, I travel. And then I think that's the most beautiful and it's what I love. And with my kids, it's a little bit harder this year because they're starting school. So each city, we get a school for the kids, but I did that, my mom did that, so 
It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. Do they like it? Sort of going to a new school like every they couple of months? They love it. They love it. They're making so many friends. And, uh, and here is the second year. Last year they did kindergarten, this year first grade. So they already know the kids from last year. So they love it. They, they have such a beautiful social life. With long-running shows like Ringling Brothers shutting down after 146 years, is there a lot of pressure to up the ante with your act? Oh, well, it's, a, it's very sad to see shows closing, but of course we need to keep up with the show and then it, the courts never close. We say when closed, the other one opens. And when Ringling Brothers closed, we had Big Apple coming back. So that was the beauty of it. And then we're starting a new life and a new show and then like we always say like Big Apple is like the Broadway show so of course you need to do the best what you do to keep traveling and to keep up in different shows but uh, it's beautiful to open up another show you know like we did with the Big Apple set. So you guys are, what is it, only 10 performers have ever done a quadruple somersault on the trapeze? Yes, there's 10 performers that did it in the entire history of a quadruple somersault, but actually nowadays it's just two performers and one of them is my husband, Ahmed Tunisiani. He's doing the quadruple somersault here at the Big Apple Circus. So was adding that trick in, you know, self-motivated, we want to make this show the best we can do, or is it kind of like circus is getting so competitive now? It's it's for him, you know, like the best that one uh, flying trapeze performer can do on the trapeze is the quadruple somersault. So he always like look forward to, to do this, to achieve this trick, and he did it. And it's not just because he want to work in the best circus in the world, but this trick actually going to get him to work in the best circus in the world. And his name is getting bigger and bigger. So definitely all the trapeze artists out there want to to at least try one time a quadruple somersault. So circus performers, just like any professional athlete, constantly push their bodies to the extreme. When you add in elements like flying and falling, how common are injuries? Well, there is injuries. I won't say it's no, but it's uh, we do this for such a long time. Like I started, I was 10 years old. My husband starts, he was eight years old. So we, we respect what we're doing and there's injuries and of course I never did my husband had a surgery in his shoulder but it was like a minor type of surgery it's just nothing nothing bad I never saw nobody falling very bad on trapeze thanks God yeah but yes it's happened it uh, but now everything it's much better than let's say 40 years ago like much modern the, uh, the props, the, the net, the, the rigging in sea, it's, it's much, much better. It's needed. a lot safer. Yeah. But the, I mean, this is the beauty of the circus. It's a live show where you're actually seeing some people flying and you're actually seeing the, the flipping around and stuff like that. It, is there an extra element of nerve since you are performing with your husband? Well, yes and no, because he calms me down. I don't know, just because he's so good at what he does and you look up for it, you know? And uh, of course, you you actually, you don't want nothing to happen to no one in your family. I'm not just working with my husband, also with my brothers-in-law, and which is his brothers. So we work as a family together, so it kind of gives you the strength to do good, and then you know the people you're there with you, you actually, you trust. I don't want nothing bad to happen to them, but I'm, I'm so happy that they're here with me. I've always wondered, how do you ever try a new trick for the first time? And are you completely unfazed by the fear and danger of it at this point? Well, I think I never think about this, but we all use the, the mechanic, the launch mm -hmm. for new tricks. I personally, I, I used it and then it just focus on what you're doing. First, we're practicing, let's like, say a trampoline on the floor, you get first the, the, the look of it and then you try on trapeze. I mean, yeah, I think I, we like, inside us, we like that fear that goes in our blood, circus people blood. I actually tried the flying trapeze one time and it was literally the most terrifying experience really? of my life. <laughs> like I wouldn't even let go. The first time you did it, were you, were you scared or did you just love it? I tried many things, different things in the circus. My mom tried me to do handstand, uh, contortion act, because my mom, uh, took so long to tell me she she did trapeze because she was a little afraid of trapeze and of course you look to your child and you're like well let's try something in the floor something <laughs> that maybe it's less dangerous 
but I tried everything. When I was 10, I flew in trapeze for the first time because I wanted to go. And then I, I was never scared, like not, the respect, yes, but never scared of trapeze. I knew that was, my dad did, my grandfather did. So, of course, it was running in my blood, you know. Maybe we'll do a side by side. You can see me crying and then see you actually doing it. That would, that would be great. <laughs> So in the Big Apple Circus, you and your husband are known as super mom and super dad. <laughs> is the hope that your children will one day carry on your legacy? Definitely. And i pretty much sure that they will because they see trapeze and they're like, Mom, I just want to be like you. And my son is like, I want to do the quadruple somersault just like that. And I feel like they, we give them the opportunity to go to school like I did. And I was actually very good at school and my son is very smart. But I feel like trapeze and the circus, it just, it's in our blood. It's a, it's tradition and I feel like he's gonna follow the steps of us, definitely. Are they showing some talent already? Oh yeah, my son, he already flew on trapeze. Wow. He's six years old and then he already flew on trapeze, so definitely they are. What is the one thing that you wish people knew or understood about circus life? Well, I would love them to understand how much we love this and then how much we do this for the audience, for the public, because it's such a, like it's a family tradition in my case. And then whoever's run with the circus is because they really love this art. And then I think the, the appreciation of the art, that's what I most would love them to understand and to, to try to see like behind the scenes. Like we, we do this with our family. We try to keep this alive, you know, as much as we can. So definitely like look forward to, to see what is the circus people like and understand that with so much love because we actually do this with so much love. Neil Kahanovitz, the circus chairman, gave us a behind the scenes look at where the performers and crew eat, sleep and prep while on the road. Many people credit Neil with saving the Big Apple Circus after the once nonprofit declared bankruptcy in 2017. The Manhattan surgeon, along with Big Top Partners, purchased the circus at auction and has seen it into both its 40th and 41st anniversary. Although Dr. Kahanovitz is a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon whose long list of accolades includes having operated on three Supreme Court justices, this isn't his first time with the circus. I ran away when uh, I was in college. Uh, first started out selling popcorn and someone was injured in a trampoline act and I'd done trampoline in high school and college for uh, diving and the swimming team. And I began doing comedy or the clown in the trampoline act and a fellow who would do somersaults to my shoulders um, was in a trapeze act and he had taught me how to do trapeze and ended up as an aerialist. Neil had finally made his way back to the circus, but what he bought was still a mystery. When we actually took possession of the circus, we had no idea what was in the trucks. And there was uh, 30, 40 trucks and probably 20 RVs that had been sitting pretty much neglected for almost a year and a half. And so a lot of what had been functional wasn't anymore. And it was a huge undertaking to sort of figure out what we needed to do to make this show worthy and road worthy because it's not just a question of putting on a show it's a question of getting it from point a to point b and in here is all the dressing rooms and wardrobe and lolise is our wardrobe mistress lolise vargas is the head of wardrobe for the big apple circus each costume takes months to complete from initial design construction and fittings Although the overall look is important, safety and functionality must be seamlessly integrated, and performers weigh in on their act's unique requirements. While we were there, Lelise was making a last-minute adjustment to animal trainer Jenny Bidbell's costume, adding hidden pockets for her horse's carrots. But of course, some acts are more challenging than others. Who's the most difficult? Oh. That's, not, that, that's not answer. fair. <laughs> he is. It's not easy for them. We don't make it easy for the wife or for my dear. <laughs> this year's custom looks were designed by Broadway alum Amy Clark. But after 40 years, the Big Apple Circus definitely has no shortage of costumes at its disposal. We had at least 2,000 costumes that came with it. So we have decades worth of costumes that uh, are packed away. Um, and every once in a while we'll, we'll pull out, or at least we'll pull out uh, some costumes and bring them back to life. 
we'll use them for different purposes like uh, the the ushers last year wore band costumes from years ago. Lalisa's husband also travels with the show, and even though spectators will never see him in the center of the ring, he might have one of the most important jobs at the circus. Alex is the one who is in charge of moving the entire show. He's what's called the tent boss, and he's the one who arrives at a site before everybody else and puts a mark on the ground where over 100 stakes go. And if you're off, even by a few inches, the tent doesn't go up straight, so the lights don't hang correctly, the flying act is crooked, and uh, it's a real, it's, it's really an art to being able to put up something like that and, and make sure that it gets up in time, but also goes up straight and comes down straight. So everybody looks at him when it doesn't go well? Yes. <laughs> The circus travels with the infrastructure of a small town, bringing in its own power supply, heating, air conditioning, water pumps, moving offices and laundry facilities to each of its stops. Even seemingly cosmetic choices serve a purpose, with a show switching to a blue tent in the winter to conserve heat and a white top in the summer to reflect the sun. But of course, New York City comes with its own unique challenges. People live in these year round and actually uh, a lot of these trailers are, are beautiful. I mean, they have every creature comfort you would have in a house or an apartment. Most of the families are here traveling with their children, and for them, this is home. And before we come, the months before, we lay out on a CAD drawing based on the specs of each trailer, how wide is it, how long is it, and then each one is loaded in individually. The other challenging part about coming to Lincoln Center is we can only have so many trucks on the street at one time. So it has to be staged and there is an hour by hour schedule of what gets dropped off and what leaves. So each of these trailers are brought in by a special little tractor or forklift and a lot of the trailers are actually lifted on a forklift and dropped into place. A lot of the performers are on this side because it's closer to the dressing room. So they have less distance to go, particularly when the weather's bad, to get ready for the show. When they do their act and warm up for their act. They are in the band show that we just visited. But other than that, they can come home and play with the kids, watch TV. Short commute? Yes, yeah. you can walk to work. Fortunately, when we are in other cities, we have a lot more space, so there's a lot more privacy and you're not really living on top of one another. Our final stop on the tour was the cookhouse. The show's two chefs are tasked with serving three meals a day to the more than 100 people who make up cast and crew. But luckily, like many of the other people we met, they are no strangers to the circus life. They've been with us since we started up about a year and a half ago. And uh, they came from Ringling Brothers, so they certainly have the sawdust in their blood and probably the uh, food as well. After you. So Adriel, you saw up in the uh, flying act, and there's one of our stars of the trampoline act. Mark's our clown. Since many of the shows take place on holidays, everyone gets creative while on the road. One crew member described the show's annual Christmas light competition, where both cast and crew deck out their trailers, hoping to be the most festive trailer on the block. Friendly competition aside, at the end of the day, they all choose to celebrate with their family, the Big Apple Circus. For Thanksgiving, uh, we have a one o'clock, we do the parade in the morning, and then we have a one o'clock show, and then everybody has Thanksgiving dinner together. Actually, my wife is the one who's putting together this year's Thanksgiving dinner. And then Christmas, we do the same thing. It's like summer camp. Yeah. All year round, every day. I think everybody is particularly proud of what we've done here because when Ringling closed and Big Apple Circus went bankrupt last year, there was you know, a lot of talk about this is the end of Circus in America. And Circus in America has been around before baseball. It's been around a long time. And the fact that we were able to bring it back at this level, uh, I think gives these people and myself uh, a great sense of satisfaction and pride that you were able to, to not only revive something that was what many people thought was dead, but also to bring it back at this level. And I think when you see the show, you understand. <laughs>